Good evening. Myself is Dr. Sneha, Junior Resident, Department of Radio Diagnosis from MJ Medical College and Hospital, Kamoti, Navi Mumbai, Maharashtra. My topic is MRI in the early detection of the spinal tuberculosis. Now the uh, tuberculosis spondylitis, also known as sports disease, refer to the vertebral body osteomyelitis and the intervertebral discitis from the tuberculosis. The spine is most frequent location of musculoskeletal tuberculosis and commonly at its symptoms are the back pain and the lower limb weaknesses and the paraplegia. The spine is involved due to the hematogenous spread that can occur via the artery and veins resulting in the different pattern of the infections like NTA involvement, uh, posterior uh, involvement and the central involvement. Now NTA involvement spread through the arterial arcade that richly supplies is the subchondral paradiscal bone resulting in infection anterior superiorly and the anterior inferiorly adjacent to the disc. In adults and particularly older individuals, the disc is conspicuously spared due to its sparse vascularity. In contrast, in younger individuals, especially children, the disc may be involved early as it has a far richer blood supply. The gradual anterior collapse typically results in the acute kyphotic and the gibbous deformity and this angulation coupled with the epidural granulation tissue which leads to the cord compression. And the central involvement spread via the venous plexus of Bethson typically results in the infection rising centrally within the vertebral body. More common in older individuals, it gradually collapse can result in the vertebra plana and acute kyphotic and gibbous deformity, which also leads to the cord compression. Posterior involvement, also known as appendiceal pattern, is also due to venous hematogenous spread via the posterior venous plexus. Now, synovial joint involvement is relatively very rare but can be seen involving the facet joint and atlanto-axial and atlanto-occipital joints. Cold abscess in the late stage of the spinal tuberculosis, large paraspinal abscess can develop without severe pain, frank pus or the prominent inflammatory sinus symptom, thus we call it cold abscess. Now, the aim and objective to demonstrate, analyze and evaluate an MRI as a valuable non-invasive diagnostic tool in spinal tuberculosis and to promote its early detection. Now, we have performed 30 patients with appropriate MR sequence referred to the Department of Radiology, MGM Medical College in a period of one year with clinically and imaging wise suspected case of both spine. Now, we, I have a few cases. First is a 50 year old male, non case of tuberculosis, presented with a low grade backache for five months. Now, in this, we can see tuberculous spondylitis of L2 and L3 vertebral bodies with the collapse of the L3 vertebral body. We can see there is a disc show discitis also, destruction and fluid intensity in this and there is a epidural abscess which is measuring in the 6 mm in the maximum thickness and we can see there is a bilateral iliopsoas abscess is also there. Next patient, 30 year old male presenting with a back pain and with tingling and numbness in the, both the lower limbs. In this we can see tuberculous spondylitis of L3 and L4 vertebral body with end plate involvement. We can see there is a disc is also involved and there is a psoas abscess from L3 to lower down on the right side. Next patient, 60 year non case of tuberculosis presented with low backache and pain in both upper and lower limb weakness. Tuberculous spondylitis of T3 vertebral body and T10 to 11 vertebral bodies and bilateral pedicles with reduced height of the T10. And there is a disc is also involved and this leads to also the cord compression we can see and there is a pre and para vertebral collection is also there. Next patient, 14 year old male patient, non case of tuberculosis, for follow up after treatment, we can see there is a spondylitis of T4 to T7 vertebral body, and there is a total destruction of these T5 and T6 vertebral bodies with posterior displacement of this vertebral body compressing the spinal cord. And there is a collapse of the T4, T5, T5, T6, and T6, 7 disc also, and there is a paravertebral collection is also there. Now results in our study, we can we have seen the port spine commonly affected age group mainly 20 to 40 years of the age. 30 patients, 17 patients had two vertebral involvement and rest of them have three, four single vertebral also involvement is there. Mainly 55% uh, of patients have seen thoracic spine involvement was more common than the lumbar spine and cervical and lastly the sacrum is least involved. And 86% patients had involvement of vertebral end plate of which 80% have disc involvement. 20% have posterior involvement and 83% patients had thecal compression out of which 36 had actual cord compression which leads to the uh, paraplegia and there is a cord edema in 20 patients. Now we have concluded MRI superior diagnosing post spine resulting showed that young adults 20 to 40 years of age were commonly affected with prediction of the thoracic spine. Most cases in the study showed multiple vertebral involvement but few can have the single vertebral involvement. 
using mri it was possible to determine the cord compression osseous and non osseous involvement and the extent of the disease thank you so much